I think I just found a missing baby, but I don't know if I want to find out what should I do. This is OKOP, where we read the craziest true stories on Earth. I'm John, and good Riley, if you found a, a scenario, some sort of scenario we're about to get into with a potentially possible missing baby, would you just be like, nah? If it got itself there, it should get itself out. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. <gasps> Spill that tea. And this comes from Husky Girl 86. I found an abandoned 1999 Honda Civic in a forest on the Nevada, California border on the California side. Normally, I wouldn't think much of an abandoned car, but this just looked like something bad had happened. The trunk was popped open and items were still inside. These items were a box of diapers, a sunshade for a pram, an infant size winter jacket, a plush toy for an infant, and an open an envelope for a paycheck from a business in Reno, Nevada. The envelope has a name, an address, and an employee ID number on it. There was a baby carrier in the back seat, which luckily only had some trash in it and not a baby. Thank God. The other <laughs> things in the car was just some food and drinks and trash and a sock that was baby sized. All of the baby stuff was pink and girly, so I'm assuming the baby was a little girl as well. The name on the envelope was female as well. The car had a license plate removed, the lights and the radio were removed, as well as the back tire. Tires. Man, this thing is just a little worse for wear. Outside the car was an empty box of diapers, a high heel hanging from a tree with the sole torn up and the matching one across the clearing on the ground, an amount of fresh dirt between the shoe, tree, and the car. Oh, this is so detailed. This is like, I feel like it's giving true crime vibes, unfortunately. Yeah. You are a well-written author, OP. <sighs> I took photos of everything and wrote down the VIN and the name and address on the envelope. I wandered around the surrounding area of the forest a bit more, and I found a pile of women's clothing strewn across the ground, maybe a hundred feet into the tree line man this person really is like a forensic like reporter or like <laughs> novelist over here these clothes weren't winter appropriate they looked like underwear a bra and some shorts seeing the clothes started to give me some worry for what the situation with this car if it's connected i ran the vin number through an online search and the number doesn't come back as reported stolen the other thing that unnerved me was that everything was dry and mostly clean compared to the surroundings We've had consistent rainfall and the ground was muddy, yet the diaper box on the ground was dry. The cardboard didn't seem to have been rained on or anything even absorbed much water from the mud. The contents of the trunk were also dry and fairly clean, which seemed wrong given the fresh mud and consistent rain. The exposed metal from where the tires were removed also hadn't rusted yet. The car was neatly parked in the clearing and not on the road like it got stuck in the mud or the snow or something like that. So. I called all of this into the police. Nice. I gave them photos and a GPS location and the Forest Service road number, but I've got nothing back yet. Not a great sign. Just kind of all negative signs yeah, <laughs> so far, unfortunately. The county this forest sits in is pretty small, so I don't even know if the police have the resources to even go this far to check the car out. Given that the car seemed to be freshly left there and there's a child involved, I want to get some closure that whoever this is belonged to is okay, and this is just a stolen car that was left in the woods. Does anyone have advice on what I can do to get more information on what happened? I will admit this forest has always given me unnerving vibes, so maybe I'm reading too deep into this, but I wanna make sure nothing worse happened to whoever owned the car and the baby. We have a juicy update. <sighs> Dude, Coming what, up do you, here. what do you think is happening? Put on your hat. Put on your hat. Um, I am slightly afraid of the worst, to be honest. Yeah. It's very detailed and it looks, it doesn't look good. Yeah. This like all. forensic, this rogue FBI agent who's just taking to Reddit to just spill the case files is really just lay, laying it out for yeah. us today. On to the update the next day, December 2nd. Ooh. I hope I'm updating this correct. I have good news, y'all. Okay, oh, so this what? is better than what we thought. This was luckily the best case scenario, and my update is mundane. With the help of other users with far better detective skills than me, we were able to track down the individual's Facebook page. This has been confirmed to be the individual who owned the car. She is safe and her child is safe as well. Oh, good. Thank God. Wow. She's active on Facebook and I contacted her with information on where her car is. 
She had posted about it getting stolen in early September and no one else had stumbled upon it and told her until I did. That checks out so much. It, it really, it honestly all makes sense. Like someone stole the stuff, all the crap is everywhere. Thank you to everyone who helped guide me to help find her and to help her find her car. I'm very happy this was just a creepy find and nothing more nice. than theft. Um, yeah, this could have been a drastically different scenario. Yeah. And I'm glad that is truly all that it was. But yeah, I think, I mean, OP did the right thing. And it seemed like they took a lot of pictures. Yeah. So that's probably why they were so detailed because yeah. they were like... I actually need help. This is what everything looks like. Cars do be abandoned abandoned sometimes. Yeah, yeah. In all honesty, I, I don't think I would stop because they literally wouldn't even give think it a of it. second thought. You'd just yeah. be like, it's a abandoned car or whatever. Yeah. But, if I, but if I did stop, I in, in all honesty, like I probably would be like, I don't know if my brain would think clearly if I thought that there was some sort of foul play. I would probably immediately call the police you just get the ball rolling just get the ball rolling um maybe maybe wait there to make sure they get there i, I really truly think that i wouldn't even be wise enough to think about it um but you know what i am wise enough to do riley what's that read this next story <laughs> I was thinking about leaving my wife after she opened up to me what should I do and that is the question Riley what should they do um depends on what she's telling you that's really that's really is the kicker right how you respond if she <laughs> you should respond by using words after she used words to you about a month ago my wife and I had a long talk um. you know a long talk it's not a good talk. <laughs> she explained to me that she no longer knew if she loved me as a man anymore or if she ever loved me truly. Oh, those are the worst talks. All this started when we married a year and a half ago. Sex got less and less frequent and I started complaining about it, but it never changed. After a while, she got distant and stopped saying she loved me, doing things with me, posting things on social media, Etc. Etc. Babe, why are you not pecking me anymore? Yeah. It makes me sad. <laughs> I want it. Hey, Riley. Yeah. You know what to do. Oh no. Pick up the sign and point it at your own freaking face. Pick up the sign and point it at your own freaking face. That's right. That makes me satisfied. We had a few conversations about how I was feeling left out and how could we improve, but it never did. Then she started doing therapy in about three to four sessions. She and her therapist came to the conclusion that she no longer knew if she was in love with me. Ouch. We sat down and talked. We decided to work things out and to do our best not to divorce. Nice. The thing is, I am the only one trying. Of all the things I said I wanted in this relationship, she never made any effort to actually do any of them in this last month. I'm getting quite frustrated with the situation because I don't even know if she wants to get better or just wants me to finish this relationship so she doesn't get to be the one that ended it. This month, I have been thinking about restarting my life, focusing uh. on my plans and wishes, and eventually finding someone who truly loves me the way I know I deserve to be loved. Do deserve that, OP. But on the other hand, I don't want to let this relationship die. It's been so long, we've been through so much together, and I fear that eventually both of us will regret it if we part ways. I'd like some input. Hey. You came to the right place. Yeah. Your boys are here to help you. I like some input on people that have been in the same situation. Did you work it out? Did you divorce? I am quite lost here. P.S. We have been together for about seven and a half years. We were quite happy before marriage and never once did I think of doubting her love for me until she said it loud and clear. We have some relevant comments that we are going to read. But mm. uh, big protein, I think we have been asked to dispense some advice it's on the situation. It's not looking good, buddy. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if this is necessarily advice, but one kind of question I have is, do you kind of ask her if she wants to end it? Like, yeah. Like, if you're kind of, like, getting that feeling of, like, I'm just waiting for them to, like, break it off or vice versa, like, the partner is, like, let me just drag this out until the, the other partner breaks it off. Do you just go outright and be, like, hey in all honesty like do you not want to be in this yeah, relationship because it sounds like like she's bored of the relationship but we do in addition to our saucy comments we have some other relevant comments oh reasonable cookie 9369 says look into the sunken cost fallacy your own therapist and make an exit plan op 
I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so enthusiastic, Damn, about right? It. Yeah. Thanks for the exit plan. Glinda the witch says, tell her that she is free to go. It's clear she isn't interested in making the marriage work. Let her do the work of packing and leaving. She needs to understand she either needs to make the effort or leave, but you won't wait around until she decides. Okay. OP, I am definitely not waiting. Thanks. So he's taking this advice like a champ, <laughs> right? Like, yep. We'll do buckaroonie. He's like, he's like got a happy face, but behind it, a happy mask face yeah. behind it. He's like crying. It's crying under it, dude. Suck a dicta. Oh, you ain't one too. <laughs> Says seems like a classic example of her sticking it out until you come to the same conclusion as she already has. Opie says, that's what's been in my heart this whole time. I mean, it feels like Opie's kind of made up his mind at this yeah. point. Like, I'm going to look into all these things and my exit strategy and my own therapist and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what this feels like. Sorry, Opie. But we have a juicy update. Ooh. Well, it's been a while, and I can say for sure that going through these couple of months has been the hardest thing I have done in my life. But good news, we did not divorce, and we are doing well. Oh. That is a big plot twist to me. What do you, What changed? I was not expecting that at all. Well, let's, let's find out. Since my original post, we have talked, fought, cried. But early this week, I spent a few days in my parents' house, and she went to hers this time alone, which was crucial to understand that we were not ready to give up our marriage, even though I was 90% sure that I was for a while. We were apart and I talked to some friends and I had an amazing talk to my mom and my dad. They were great and gave me some good advice. Hey, yeah, yeah, you know what? Applause for that. That's that's awesome. Wow. Yeah, Still for real. It. You know, if this is, we, we brought you in this world, we raised you in this world, we can keep raising you in this world. Quote from my brain. <laughs> Yesterday, I went back home and my wife and I had probably the most open-hearted conversation we have ever had in almost eight years years of relationship. She exposed some, she exposed some things to me that she did not like and I finally understood the reason behind the I do not love you as a man anymore. Wow, I am there, there's definitely some 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 tea in this iceberg. You see, the way I behaved in some areas of life was not ideal and I could have been a much better husband in those one and a half years of marriage, but I was blind to it all. It's not 100% my fault, but I could have prevented a lot of the things that started the strain on our relationship. I apologized and promised her I was going to be a better man and husband and she forgave me. What are they? <laughs> tell <laughs> us. Please tell me. I'm turning into Sam who always wants to know the details. Um, <laughs> we talked a lot and I explained to her my point of view and she did the same. We cried, we hugged, we cuddled, we kissed, and that day I realized we were meant to go through this thing in order to make our relationship stronger. Now we have unlocked the ability to have a proper conversation, and I, fe and I feel like our marriage starts now. I've never doubted for a second she was the love of my life. Having her by my side is all I need, and I feel I can face everything the world has thrown at us now that she is with me. Thanks to all of you for your advice and shared stories. It has helped me out a lot. And we have some more relevant updates after this. Dude, that's so wholesome. But wow, what a what a wholesome, wholesome, wholesome update and unexpected, honestly. Yeah, that, was, that was a big I guess we around. are reading some wholesome stories today. But yeah, I, I honestly was not expecting that. What do you think like some of the reasons why she didn't love him as a man? Like some like surface level stuff. We don't have to get super deep, but yeah. what do you think like would it cause her yeah, to say yeah. that? Let's, let's, let's talk about that because come on, you, you yeah. can't give us nothing on that. I feel like probably maybe something along the lines of like not talking about her, like, like okay. how was your day, kind of ignoring her, not taking her feelings into account, kind of just like generally being like unaware. Yeah. I would guess. I would say like not leading like when it comes to like planning a date or like yeah, that's a yes. some household decisions. Settling into the relationship. He's like letting her kind of lead. And yeah. I feel like it's important for him to speak up in ways like that. Totally. Yeah, that's that's a great one. We have some relevant comments. Maybe we'll get some freaking information okay. from them. Intelligent Buyer 516. I'm glad everything worked out. Feral Cat. 
despite the hundreds of reddits that told him to lawyer up and head out and kick her to the curb. Laughing emoji. Omi Razbataz 339 says, take your parents out to dinner. Looks like they really helped. OP, will do. Looks like they did help a lot. Cranky Southerner says, glad to hear that you're happier. Not sure why you got married before figuring out how to have a real conversation. Ouch. But I'm glad you got there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> OP, God, that's that's kind of crazy. OP, I've always tried to have proper conversations, but it was quite hard for her to talk without crying. She simply could not, so it was 90% a monologue of me trying. Now I think we can do better. Also to note, some of the other relevant comments had to do with his gaming in RuneScape, where he logged like, oh. th like thousands of hours, so I think that might have been <laughs> a big part of the whole I don't love you as a man thing. Dude, yeah, yeah, that... Wow. I still I still feel like we're missing a lot of details on like what it was. And I think OP is like intentionally yeah, omitting that yeah, from yeah. us. Because he's like, I was prioritizing her in these ways. And yeah. yeah. It kind of sounds like he was the one effing up. Yeah. And and I think probably the wife was kind of like, I don't know if this is going to change. But it looks like it's probably back on the right track. We had a, a nice, sweet, wholesome ending on this one. Don't get divorced. Don't. Di no divorce. No, no divorce, divorce. No, no divorce. divorce. And uh, let's get into another wholesome story. Ooh. My cat will not let me sleep in. Should I kick it to the streets? Do you enjoy baking animals into orphans? Go. When it's well deserved. When it's well deserved. <laughs> what would an animal have to do to you to, to deserve Dude, bite orphan, me. orphanness? Bite, bite you? Bite me, bite a kid. You know what's so unfortunate? To a dog... Biting a kid and a an adult is like almost the same. You're just like, I'm just biting you. But like, actually, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you are joining in on a late night recording session. Mm. We are, uh, you know, it's I was currently... feeling like on fire. But now listening to my own commentary, I'm like, you know what? Maybe put down in the comments below. Is, is is our commentary good right now? Are we are we just floating in an ether? Mostly mine. Mostly mine. I think he sounds great. Um, Riley has been contributing 110%. Just proteining everywhere. But <laughs> <laughs> so Goblin Modding says, genuinely, I get up every morning and feed my cat breakfast at 6 a.m. She eats, cuddles up to me, and then we both go back to sleep. Sounds like a vibe, right? Does sound like a vibe. Uh, actually, no, that does not sound like a vibe. I have a cat. And if my cat woke me up every day when I didn't want to be woken up, I would not be happy. Wait, but the, they did sweet afterwards. They didn't what afterwards? It's sweet to you afterwards. Uh, you know what's sweet, Riley? What? Sleep. Sleep is sweet to me. My cat already parks in between our legs. So when we turn over, we almost crush her very <laughs> small and frail body <laughs> and also make me sleep like like this. Like, uh, but that's the most comfortable position. I dang near have to freaking put my, my foot behind my head to get some, some dang sleep. The weekend comes, then 1030 hits. Every time we get here without fail, she wakes me up. Wow, she man, the cat understands the weekend? Dang, smart kitty. Party cat. Starts as just staring at me until I wake up because of her unsettling presence. <laughs> if that doesn't work, it usually does. She taps me. Great, I'm awake, but it's not Enough. Never enough. She starts pulling my hair next if I don't get out of my bed immediately, lol. I tell her, no. Then she backs off. I turn my head and she's biting my hair again to get my attention. It's not food. She doesn't want me to pet her. She won't play with me. I've tried all her toys. I've tried chasing her. I've tried letting her bite my hand like she always does, which obviously I don't just let her do. And as soon as I get up, she goes and stares out of the window or lays down where I am laying or just starts running laps around the bed. Y'all, I don't get it. I have no clue what she wants me to do other than let her have my spot. Now, we do have an update in this cat saga does your cat do this what's like the craziest thing your cat does? my cat my cat is kind of crazy when we literally the first time we brought her from new york to california she literally some god knows how but she uh we had like a a cabinet with like three or four shelves high she somehow opened the door and climbed up all of the shelves to be hidden at the top of the cabinet literally four days days she was up there so i had to like get her food and her water and like put it there and like slowly coax her out my, my dog did something similar like that when we yeah. brought her she only st stood underneath the, the kitchen table for like a few days she does weird things she started chasing her tail and like she'll like <laughs> jump in the air like a foot high when she catches it <laughs> i i, I, I 
if I could explain the logic of this of this animal, I would be so happy. I have, I have no idea. But let's get into Opie's cat. Update. Long story short, my cat kept waking me up randomly at night and not letting me sleep and then letting me sleep in on days that I could even after feeding her. I have a smart watch and among other things like being a watch, it also tracks my oxygen levels and my heart rate and stuff at night. Put ICU in the comments if you see what's about to go down. I think I think Riley, are you are you yeah, predicting anything? I'm, I'm seeing what she's putting down. I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing something. She woke me up again this morning at around 4:30 and very violently would not let me go back to sleep. I sat up and noticed I felt pretty winded, and so I opened up my watch and my oxygen levels had dropped from 95 to 89, which is what does that mean? Bad. So if your oxygen levels go to, I think, below 80, you need like a machine to be alive, like oh. for, for extended periods of time. And she's like kind of creeping on that number. Yeah, like 95 is not good. Then I saw it did the same thing yesterday right before she woke me up. Then I went back and started checking. And almost every time she's just randomly woken me up has correlated with my oxygen dropping below normal. I don't know if I was breathing funny or if she just knew something was up. And I know correlation doesn't equal causation, but the pattern is way too obvious. And I already know I have breathing struggles while I'm awake. So I guess I'm going to get a sleep study done. Cats, man. She's sleeping by my feet now, completely content now that it's back to normal. I don't know if she knows how smart and awesome she is, but man, I love her so much. She can be a bully sometimes, but is always out of love. Aww. And quick edit. Sometimes cats are just jerks. This doesn't always mean something is wrong. Always consult with a medical professional when you suspect something might be going on. Smiley face. In my case, I have had these symptoms for years and never explored sleep apnea as a diagnosis and wouldn't have thought to do so until now after noticing this pattern thanks to BAST. Cat tax shall be added i think like dogs like like i think for if you have like a seizure or epileptic episodes and like other things like dogs can be trained to do that i think the crazy like how do they know innately that is the thing that just absolutely blows yeah. my mind because sometimes we do things to our animals that may seem like it's hurting them like give him shots or like take him to the vet right. and they're like why are you doing this to me da, 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 da. yeah and then they're doing this to us and it's like sort of the same thing like they don't really understand why we're doing that to protect them and then they're doing that to us, and we don't really understand that. That's kind of insane that it Riley, figured that out. You're you're blowing my mind on this Tuesday night. I don't I don't know if I can <laughs> I can handle this much just awe inspiring epiphany blowing into my brain hole. Wow! But another another incredible wholesome ending. Yeah, Riley. Yeah, I, I really absolutely wish love it. I had another one. Wait, but. Riley, we do. Dude, please tell me to me. Right Let's now. read it. Today, I effed up by peeing my pants in front of my date. What should I do? Oh, what this... do you even do on that? If you're on a first date with your current girlfriend, would she have stayed with you? I feel like she would have. <laughs> um, we really? freaking we freaking macked on our first date, dude. The vibes were crazy. The vibes what? were crazy. I would have. I would just max with my piss soaked pantaloons like an hour and a half in you just piss yourself she would still hang out no so okay what would actually happen i think usually there's some like if not like at a restaurant or something a water bottle or something i would pretend to spill water all over myself to where i'm like i've ruined my pants or or, or i might just be like oh my gosh i have to use the bathroom i'll be right back but you know there is one way to find out what happens in this story Spill that tea. This comes from Embird's guy. Embarrassing as heck, guys. I feel disgusting. A real today I effed up on all levels. I, 23 male, have liked this girl, 23 female, for around three years now. We are in the same university classes, and even during the pandemic when I barely saw her, I was still crushing on her. What's up, mama? I asked her out last week and was over the moon when she viciously turned me down. Mm. Just kidding, she agreed. It's not as satisfying with you, Riley, because you have the, st 
What? <laughs> Riley just realized I lied. <laughs> Dude, you're... I was like, oh yeah, this is typical. I just snapped Riley back into reality. <laughs> Today, we met up in a nearby restaurant, and that's where all of this started. I have this condition called periuresis shy bladder syndrome where I just am not physically able to pee if other people are around in public bathrooms. Even if I really have to go, I just can't. So because of my nerves and because of how hot it is and the amount of water I stupidly drank, I ended up going to the bathroom several times. Of course, I couldn't pee. Oh, dear. Your dick's big enough, buddy. You got it. This is tough. Can pee. This is tough. Sorry. <laughs> God damn. I just damn Riley. Did, he's very racist. Okay. So shut the fuck up. Okay. God. <laughs> then she told me that if I was not feeling okay, it would be totally fine to go home. I agreed and apologized to her and she ended up paying the bill. It's so sweet, but dang, I really have to pay her back. Lock her up as soon as you possibly can. <laughs> that is very rare. Lock her up to the unicorn. <laughs> Riley's like, please, please, please. What, what's her number? And then we got out. It was somewhere in the parking lot where it happened. <gasps> I just could not hold it back. I just stood there traumatized. I did not know this girl well enough, but I was prepared to be ridiculed. She first went, oh my God, are you okay? Then started stroking my back and took off her jacket and put it around me. Yo, we have got a real one oh on our gosh. hands right here. She told me it could happen to anyone and I should come to her place, which was a two minute walk away where I could shower. I did agree on it because I felt like a disgusting mess. Yeah, I low key, I feel like it is like super embarrassing, but at that point you're kind of like, I would rather be like, yeah, than like, nah, I'm good. Like th that is, I think, very much the right two move. minute walker and an unsettling amount drive back home to your <sighs> shower. Right. We went to her place and well, it actually turned out to be an amazing day. I showered. We watched some cartoons until my clothes were dry, talked about life and deep stuff, and she got us ice cream. Dude, she's so into you, bro. She's, yeah, she's so into you. I know she was trying to make me feel better, and I love her for that. <laughs> but I still was dying inside. I left just an hour ago because she needs to work in the evening and night. I was at the door when she hugged me and said it was a good day and to repeat it again soon. What if he was like, I'll pee, I'll pee somewhere else the next time? <laughs> I won't be peeing next time. Really? I just laid it on thick like, oh, I'll use the bathroom before next time. <laughs> this was embarrassing as heck, but for the first time in my life, I was not mocked or ridiculed. Even my parents would laugh at me. I feel like I hit the jackpot now, and it feels kind of surreal. She was so dang sweet and reacted this way. Like, wow, how could she be this amazing? How could she like me? Mm. You're a king, Opie. You deserve it. I bet she doesn't and just didn't want to make it worse for me today. That's probably it. Anyhow, that's how today I effed up. Guess now I really have to step my game up and make things right with her. And there is an update. Dude, right? get that flag. Dude, green flag. Major green flags. You probably can't see this. So it's a green flag. I know it looks like a portal, maybe probably a portal into see right through, yeah. our thing there. But that is a total green flag. Dude, four things, dude. One, you're Talk to me. you're attracted to her and she likes you back. That's yep. huge. Huge. Two, Foundation. she paid for everything. Wow. Three, hey, mommy. you had the biggest, most embarrassing thing that could ever happen on a first date. And she acted like it was nothing. Yep. Super mature. Absolutely. And then four, dude, you guys vibed. Dude, that, vibed so hard. That is. Five, she bought you ice cream. You licked a cone together, albeit separately for now. First date, got to be respectful. I mean, dude, seems like an absolute keeper. Guys. A few minutes ago, she texted me that she is at work and asking me how I am doing. Then says for the next date, let's go somewhere in nature to a quiet place or whatever place is comfortable to you and ask when I have time. And I am seriously shaking. This is the absolute best thing ever. I would agree, OP. Is this really even happening? There is some chance out there for her to be my girlfriend. And it's surreal. Dude, and this update was also added. It's huge. The final update our second date is <gasps> set now. Oh. And I know for sure I won't ruin it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this girl is more than amazing. 
but so are you guys. Thank you a lot for all of your kind, positive, and heartwarming comments. I'll make sure I'll show it to her. I can't believe this is happening, and we are going out again. Thanks to all of you, and you all have a very, very great day. We will, OP. Thank you. Totally forgot to say it, but some people ask, so I'll mention it here, too. She knows about the Piraeus... Piraeus... Pere <laughs> The thing. The thing. Pereasis. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. I told her when I was at her place. She proceeded to look up more info about it. I, I bet she can actually pronounce it now. And how it can be treated. And she was super supportive. She is totally the best. Never give up. Someone will accept you and love you for who you are. OP just gave me so much hope. OP, you know. Wow. Riley's over here just bricked up you know yep. uh building legos <laughs> building with legos. his lovely woman that he met recently mm -hmm. that's just a beautiful ending this I is mean, a very beautiful do ending. you need to sometimes sometimes you don't need to di dissect something you need to appreciate, appreciate it. it you have to see it for what it is now i yeah. i will say uh op is like OP's here's me here's maybe one thing op does seem to be a little punch drunk on this whole interaction and it's only the second date and he's already like guys love will find you no matter no matter what no matter where you are like on he's the just second been on date dry spell you know? which like which like you know more power to him but like things are gonna last you know ease into things in life but <laughs> let him have it dude little, I, you know little, I, little, I, little, op sparks op take it take it king yeah. take it and our Final, final, final story. story. For you lovely people. Let's get into it. I just found something on my husband's desk. Either he's romantic or he's having an affair. What should I do? It was a stuffed bear that said F me, but it wasn't the wife's name. It was his cousin's name. Well, uh, uh, oh, that would be really bad. What do you think it was? <laughs> yeah, I think it was some sort of like planned present or like a, maybe it's like a getaway weekend. And mm. she's like, wait a second. That's my guess. There's only one way to find out. Spill, Spill that, that tea. tea. So Spiff says, pictured torn out notebook page with a bullet pointed list. Being with you and around you is a gift. You light up my life and others. You make life so much closer. You inspire, you conquer, and master. Loki, what if this is just some like Tony Robbins ex self-love exercise? <laughs> I mean, being with you and yeah, around yeah. you is a gift. I'm it, just around myself. Out. It's a freaking gift, bro. Some quick commented highlights. Plot twist, he wrote that about him. Dude, what? We are getting way too good at this. Oh my gosh. I just predicted that. Yeah, he did. I predicted that we caught that on 4k y'all i didn't even i didn't even need this tinfoil hat it's built in his I'm, head it's, i i got that that tinfoil in me he wrote that about himself as a positive affirmation to lift his own spirits another common highlight who's gonna tell her and another between the pen at the very top and indicating the testing of the pen the hole punched spiral bound not letter paper and the bullet point format this really looks like a rough draft of some kind wow that is wait i got a jpeg that is deep oh so right now we're looking at a true live picture of it yeah it is it's like written there on is, a paper notebook thing. Yeah. Exactly how she said. So this really looks like a rough draft of some kind. Whether it's for a card, him writing stuff down so he can better formulate a strongly worded compliment for you or even self-affirmations. I think there's almost no way this could be anything other than very sweet and wholesome. And there is an update. Can you give me a guess, Riley? Um, this is going to be terrible. I think he's still writing it for his cousin. <laughs> I'm going to say because it's usually when we find pieces of damning evidence of cheating, it is something along the lines of I caught a Snapchat of his wee wee. I found a condom. I found a condom. I I just found got a call a, from the wife of his secret family. Found a hair tie. Usually is something like that. Yeah. This in the right context and in, in, in most contexts is amazing. So I'm going to go positive. Update. Okay, so first of all, this got way more attention than I expected, and it's about to get a whole lot more. It made my day so much fun, so thanks for all of your comments. Lots of people wanted an update, so I thought that I would share. This afternoon, the note was in the trash. I asked my husband why there was a love letter in the trash, and he was so confused. So I really love St. Patrick's Day, and I was really depressed around that time this year. He wanted to do something special for me, so he bought me six gifts to make me feel better. 
like a ball of yarn, a pepperoni stick, slippers, craft supplies, and I forget the rest. He bought you all these things and you can't even remember them. I think Brie, maybe? the cheese but each gift came with a mini card that had one thing he loves about me that note was his brainstorm of things he loves about me he said he wrote a totally different list for his mistress <laughs> but um and he's got a sense of humor ladies and gentlemen you know what i i know you're not expecting this i know you're confused what? i know everyone watching right now is like what is john oh. possibly gonna say right now he's putting up the red flag i I don't Put, think putting up a red flag. Putting why? up a red flag. I can't even think Get of it. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Okay. You're really not gonna see this one coming. Okay. Um the wife immediately thought there was a chance that this was negative when it was purely positive things. This wasn't a, re a reservation for a hotel. This wasn't a text to someone saying, like, oh, you look so good. This is simply a list of like positive affirmations. Hmm, Why would Opie's mind go? Now, is it a red flag? Kind of an exaggeration, yeah. but I wanted to wave the flag and shock everybody with my but that is fun something, revelations. Something nice that happened is she's like, this is bad. Do you think? Is this bad? I feel like this was her. So I don't. Do you think she's doing something bad? You know, I'll be honest. I don't think that she's doing something bad. Um, I and honestly, it, it's not even fully. A red flag i would say yeah um i think it's just like hmm. hmm taking why why immediately jump to a negative or think that a negative might be the thing yeah that's my question here maybe she's just a attention <laughs> i don't think that's the case but i think that i don't i don't know that it could be it could be just some insecurity and maybe not a lot it could be Something and it could be could be really small honestly but i i do th i i think if i saw this my immediate thought would be she's writing this for me or, or yeah. if I'm in a piece perspective, he's writing this for me yeah. and that's cute and that's sweet, um, which in her defense, she did say like, oh, he's either like the greatest guy ever or he's cheating on me. Yeah. Um, and she was also probably like being a little silly and a little, yeah. little facetious, but I don't know. I think I think there could be a, like it's, it's he's reaching now. He's reaching. There's a little ah. I just wanted to wave the red flag. What can I I just wanted right, to right. dang. I'm kind of sad right now through this i this is our last one you day. know i i really did bring a negative end to this story C could you guys put i hate john in the comments really quick for <laughs> no. for me ruining five no. five can he, we can we get a round just, of applause actually to spend more time with me yeah you podcast. know That's i really it did it's 11 10 at night yeah we've, we've been recording day. all day all day Since all day long like 11 this morning Th yes so it's been a full day of recording um fun y'all th this is this is all we got. This is we're we don't want to leave you. We're at the end of the road. We really have nothing left to say, and we're just stalling ending this episode because we want to stay with you right now. That's in this right. Moment. But instead, we're going to abandon you. Um, if you love us, make sure to subscribe. And we love you. See you, See you tomorrow. tomorrow.